or robotic or glitchy, like something's just off. It's very subtle at times or it can be obvious. But um, what I will be teaching you for the first thing will be something called it's a call to fake groove. And basically a groove is the dance within. So especially if you ever go to a party, a club, whatever, or you see someone dancing, there's something for the people who are good at it, you can tell like instinctively that they just look good doing it. And they're not doing anything. I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about to an extent. Where like you see someone dancing and they're not doing much, but they look right doing it. Is that little X factor? And so a lot of people don't learn this X factor, especially for popping, because it's such a technical thing. But this dance is like just on the wayside. And so you have a lot of people who get good with the technical stuff, but they still look super awkward. They can't actually dance. Well, they can't really dance. Um, so basically, it's called a fake group, which is uh, founded by this guy, this guy from LA. Um, Japanese, but it's a systematic way of teaching you how to create a fake bounce to your dance. Um, and this is super helpful for people who don't have a good idea of how to dance, period. It can teach you that basic thing, that basic bounce, and then you can add anything to it. She steps uh, off of a so cigarette. I'm not sure how much I've been my praying body all night. Like God, she gives life to my world with the yeah, can I get a light? Ignite a this is how it looks like if I do it. The only spark in the it's dark, not like much. A chandelier with no ceiling but the sky. As the smoke from her lips bleeds into the atmosphere, no ashes here, no dust. This moment is forever, even though each puff will take I'm not sure if you guys can notice it, but it's a slight, until the very last slight bounce. Um, to think of it. Love is like a cigarette. If you see burning at the table, people on YouTube, to burn the, out. most of the time like they're, they're the static. They, get you sick, they do never get bang, sick of it, so bang, up now. bang, bang, bang. But popping, there's a lot of subtle illusions. And this is an illusion. But this gives you the dance aspect of it. And so this is the bounce, the slight bounce, but it's created from illusion. And it's basically coming from the knees. I'm literally rock. I'm like literally bouncing on my knees essentially. It's like, uh, I'm rocking on my knees. I, I'm not sure if you guys can see or not. It's a little weird. My love is on fire. I'll exaggerate it. Like this is hip hop. It's like that down bounce that people most most people uh, associate hip hop with, but this is a uh, a way for popping to have its own bounce. So you're just rocking with your knees, and then everything should be falling through. Right now, you'll feel super stiff, especially with the head, because it's never uh, used to this. But essentially, I don't think anyone notices. But my head is completely isolated. It's isolated to an extent. It's hard to show up with this. My head is in place. And this, uh, so that creates a fake bounce. You have this rocking motion, and you have this um, this head isolation, and it just creates a super fake groove. It's a fake groove, but it nonetheless, it's just enough. For anyone to use and I know this is like super boring but like this is something I had wished years ago I've known and 
If anything, I give all my years of other technical knowledge to just have learned this. And so, we'll use this group to eat on something called the Fresno. posing look as unique or cool or whatever. It's just poses. It's like a series of poses and in between you have this little bounce that carries it out to make a dance. Yeah, we'll show you this chill music for now, just to uh, get this groove really start. And then with the actual hitting stuff, We'll start with like super like standard popping band boop bop that type of stuff. All right. But yeah, you want this to be this is part of the press actually. And this is the first thing that every popping teacher will most likely teach you. But uh, I don't think that's the right way of approaching. Just because if I were to teach you the Fresno, it would literally look like this. And it's like a super static, super stiff. You don't really look like you're so dancing, actually. You're just so fucking stiff. And so this bounce is like super important, just because even as something super simple and super technically stiff as this, sorry, there's like a weird like uh, delay on my end. So if I'm not hitting on the right. Uh, But this dance is all about it. And adding all these subtle, subtle isolations to create the dance. Because this in itself is an isolation. But then I also add the isolation of this bounce. It starts creating this multi layered dance. The problem is, if you go to most teachers, they only teach you one thing and they forget about the other And it's not to say they're bad teachers, it's 
they um, they didn't they teach us some codes here, we'll probably have a good understanding of dance, so some parts that they already know really well. That's why I don't typically like asking Adam all the time about um, tips about dance, because he kind of started with like some idea of how to dance, and dance pretty well, and then built from ground up. I'm coming from a background of I have zero, zero experience or understanding of how to dance. And so that's how I had to build myself. And so some things that may have been natural for Adam is not natural for me. So I'm trying to, this is more of a systematic way of teaching you how to gain some concept of dance. But yeah, just pose. If you're more interested, you can go up to me. I probably will like jam this uh, group thing to you all the time. Uh, just stick with it for a few more minutes, and uh, I'll get to the uh, technical stuff, so the hitting and such. But yeah, it's just posing. That's really all uh, popping is. If you see any world class popper, they're just really good at posing. Like when they hit beats or such, they just have a really nice pose they always use and they just stick it. And it just looks so nice. So whatever you do, I'm not sure what you're doing, but yeah, any type of pose, whether it be small, like some, if you're someone who prefers to be closer to their body, or you could be somewhere else, more outward. And it doesn't matter, it's more of a personal preference at that point. So this Fresno, and then you have what's called this bounce. Take my and I don't like to jam pack people with a shit ton of information because realistically you won't. You only pick up one or two things from a workshop, and I'd rather just focus on the things I value most. And I just want to hammer that in. So you have a decent understanding of that one or two ideas. Oh, hey, Kirsty. So what I've learned over the years is basically getting better at dance in general is quite simple. And from the advice I've been given, it literally just practice. It's practice a thing, practice more and practice consistently. And that's literally all it is. It's, I used to look for every single technical thing, every little thing that could help, but realistically it's practice more practice consistently and just practice, try to focus on a thing from time to time. And that's basically it. Uh, one big thing I really like to take from Tabo, which is the Japanese guy I've been learning most of these concepts from, is his idea of as long as you were better than you were yesterday, that's all that really matters. Whether you practice for an hour, five hours, five seconds, 10 minutes, it really doesn't matter. As long as you're better than yesterday, you'd be surprised about the, um, how skills just build up over time.
watch it burn. I'm not sure if you guys can see this bounce. Watch it burn. Differentiates poppers and I mean, um, good poppers is they just stick with a pose. knows we deserve better. They and Joe Biden all type types of get there. His plan do, guarantees but you free just public it. college for millions and expands affordable health care. He actually listened to us on climate change and now has a climate plan that goes further than any past presidents. But you have the speed. They're propelling you your weight. You have this bounce that just gives you that groove, and then you just have what they're called the poses, and just stick with them. And by definition, you're doing some sort of popping. And that's all that it really is. Then you can start adding the actual hit. So popping is actually more of an umbrella term we use nowadays for all the types of stuff. So whether it be actual hitting, which is the pop, or waving, which is... Like, it's more of a umbrella term, but... Uh, well, I will be going in a few minutes will be the actual hit, which most people know as popping. Yeah, I can't really show on this thing, can I? I'm gonna switch to something more uh, training type of music. Basically, it's just flexing. This hit, we call it popping. It's the base thing of what flex on the sort of muscle. Uh, nowadays, people have gotten more creative and you don't have to have a flex, but we'll stick with just the flex. And the most basic one is this one. one that works with the tricep. Tricep, here's an easy hack to get that feeling. Essentially, you have one arm and you try to move up, and you have the other arm, you try to pull it down. And what's it called? Your, the arm that you're trying to move up will be using the tricep to pull your arm up. And it'll be around here. And you'll notice it. So you have one here and you have one down. So whatever muscle that's trying to hold, hold your arm up, that the muscle you want to hit is your arm. And for 
of people uh, who just came in. So my music is not quite synced up with um, what I'm hearing. So if it's off beat, forgive me. My music cut off. So basically, when you're hitting. If you have your shoulders, um, if you have your hands basically facing down typically, it's your tricep that activates. And you, if you have your uh, palms facing up instead, it's typically the bicep that's being activated. And you'll know this. So let's say you have your palms facing upward, and you just try to hit, try to flex a muscle, and it's typically your bicep or tricep at times. Super easy tip I've learned to just practice a hit is literally practice with three songs in a row and just try to hit it every clap. Uh, but yeah, just try to hit every clap in uh in three songs every day, and then you will get better much quicker than you could expect.
I'm not sure if any of you guys are wondering if there's any more, but realistically, that's all there is to it. Just flex and flex in a pose. And then just do that often enough and consistently enough, and then you just get better. But yeah, just make sure you do stick with the pose. If you're like uh, sloppy or just half ass pose, it'll, it'll just look sloppy. People. So in popping, there's so many different types of hits and these arm hits are the most noticeable and most known, I guess. Then you have what's called chest hits. Uh, there's just so many. I don't know if that's the best way to, uh, to go into it this time around. But I should just let you know, there are so many different types of chest hits. Um, and there's also something called leg hits, which I just will not teach people just because I personally don't know it that well. And if you learn leg hits wrong, then it can actually really fuck up your knees. So it'll look something like this. But I, I will not teach you that just because I personally don't know it that well. And so I won't teach people something I don't know well enough. But if you're more interested about all these types of hits, just let me know. And I guess we'll do hits just a little bit more. And I think uh, typically people, besides the hitting and posing, I think a lot of people like waves, which is not technically part of popping, but we associate it with as popping. So just. So we'll go with that in a few minutes, but we'll stick with hitting just one more time.
All right, we're going to wave. Um, what's the song called? Hey, Penn State! The end of last school year was unforgettable. Who knew? So, we'll be going with waves. And essentially, a wave is an illusion of something that's wavy that's going through your body. Um, but to not an actual wave, rather it's an illusion of something, which is typically created by joints. And so we'll go over the hand wave. And so there's a 12 part system for the, the basic, basic arm, hand, arm wave. And you start with your fingertips. And you have this, like this little bridge around here. It's like a tent. You're creating a tent here. And then now, what's it called? So this is technically the hardest part, and we typically call it um, smacking like a coffee table or something. But basically, you're trying to move your. Own. You're trying to just move this elbow. And that's really hard for new people if they've never done it because you're probably going to be moving your entire hand with you and it's just hard and if you want to do it easier way we can start with this and then just stick it out and don't worry it's this part's still the hardest of all of them and it takes the longest to learn and it's basically just uh, requires a lot of muscle memory and notice how when I'm doing this I, this hand is isolated And then you have what's called the elbow. So I typically uh, tell people to just pop it in, just pop into your shoulder. But if you want to learn more about the shoulder, um, essentially it's this, and you roll it into it. And you roll it into it. And what's it called? You, we start typically rolling. Uh, forward, but in the later, if you want to be more advanced, you can also add this rolling back. But yeah, it starts with the hand. Also do the chest too. Why we almost play these games? 
So I'll go with, I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see it through my camera, but we'll do it. And if you want to get better at this, so the most important thing, first of all, is just the elbow, and it just takes time for your body to get used to it. Um, another way is you can just focus on press, uh, using the elbow, and just try to move it from here to here. And I guess for your uh, more advanced people, so we'll go over uh, the hand wave while people, the new people are just going over this elbow. Is when you're going over here, you have this, you have this hill essentially, or this mountain, and you always want to be higher than everything else. So let's say if I'm doing, what's it called, a wave, this will be higher than everything on my arm that's doing the wave. And then this will be the highest. So every crest in the wave is higher than everything else. So after that, you have to finish with the hand wave. Because with a hand wave is essentially like the brush of a, um, of a painter. It's the, it's the tip. Yeah, it is the brush essentially. And so it creates the textures. But it can only be done if you complete it. And most people do not complete their hand wave. And thinking. It's more of an instinctual thing where someone knows the wave is done when you finish. But if you don't ever finish, and it, it starts looking sloppy. And it, it destroys the illusion. Your brain instinctively knows this has ended when it comes here. But if you just keep doing this, I don't know. How to... I'm I'm technically doing it, but because it'll look sloppy. And also a little cool thing is instead of having to go back to the same level that you started and ended with this wave, you can just, um, you can see wherever you ended and start from there. So what I mean by that is like, if you start from here, it creates another layer to the wave. So rather than just doing this, Because essentially when someone views it, instead of them having to um, imagine where you started, you can actually see where they end and start. If you st try to start at where they ended. Because I think most people's brains, they can pick up when you end it correctly and then when you, where you start from your last end point. I don't know if that makes sense or not.
And for the people learning the hand wave, um, try not to think of it if you try to scoop. That's how I started doing it, where I just try to scoop to compensate for um, not being able to do it. But just try to focus on actual joints. Because it's literally just joints. I'm not actually scooping it. You can do that in the future, but it's literally just joints. There are, moving in rapid succession that if you smooth it out, it starts looking like a wave. So I'll be do, doing something, uh, it? it's called tracing, but this is what I've been doing. Essentially, you just uh, follow the wave. But you don't have to use your finger. It can literally be anything. It could be just pointing and you trace. Or what's it called, you could use your thumb. This is a super high level one, but if anyone's interested, essentially you could, instead of going just one side of the arm, you could do wrap it around. So basically like this. I don't know if I can show you. So it's more of a 3D trace. It's really hard to show, I think, on here, but most people only do a trace from the front side. But essentially, you could do a trace from the back side, but you could also wrap it around. I'm more of the uh, less is more. So you don't need anything complicated. Just hone in on whatever you like and just practice that consistently enough. So you can pick any form. Typically, people start with the uh, finger, but you don't have to. You can start with the thumb. You can start with your middle finger, whatever, whatever gang signs you want to do. Uh, or you could do um, this is typically one. Or some people even do what's about this. for when you're learning not just the weight but anything just take it slow because that's honestly the fastest way you're going to learn it is like if you slowly just build that foundation where your body just remembers the most basic thing of it then you'll slowly get quicker instead of trying to go all in at it and then you don't really learn that much because you didn't you don't really know how to do the thing and so you have to spend more time to compensate for the fact that you didn't understand where you started but if you start slow and understand exactly what you're trying to do, then you'll get a lot better, a lot quicker. You've got fashion and style. I'm 
Um, do any of you guys have some questions? What? How do you come up with ideas for like your pictures and stuff? Uh, I don't have any ideas per se. I just try to stick with the stuff I know. So a lot of people eventually always get to the point where I'm, I'm running out of moves. What do I do next, right? And essentially, don't worry about that. Honestly, that can be where you build your dance from. You start with the things that you do best, uh, whether you do crumb, uh, pop, and core, whatever. You just, after you finish what you do normally, because you always do that, it's pretty instinctual for you to do it. And you don't never have to think about it. And so instead of having to think about your uh, doing your set that you normally do, you can actually think of the next move to do after your set. Because your body's already going to do the set that you always do. And so now, because your body instinctively does that, that will be your foundation. And you can actually think of the next couple moves ahead. Does that make any sense? Because basically, I'll do something like this. But this is pretty instinctual. Because my body will do it. I have time to actually think about the next move I want to do. So I want to go up. and then push up. And that's something completely new. If I always go back to this, or what's called, I go back to here, and I can do a wave. It doesn't matter, but it's fine to have uh, things that you always do, and you can actually use that as your base. So instead of that be your weakness, you can use that as your strength. Because that's essentially a signal that this is what you're gonna do in the song. It doesn't matter, and that's okay. That means you can try to do something else after you automatically do what you already know. Anything else? I'll put the pot being playlist somewhere. Yeah, my bad. There's a lot of feedback on my end, so it's kind of hard. Wow, feel, we feel so honored to have a couple Ram alum come through, Olivia and Kirsty. Wow. Wow. I miss it. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't pass up this opportunity. So 